What's up, YouTube? Uh, we're back in the fish room. This time we're going to be doing a Grindle worm culture and how I keep them. Um, anyways, we'll start with the, uh, the bedding. Now, you can use dirt, but you're going to be prone to gnats um, in the culture. Uh, for some reason, when you start adding the, the foods that you, you need to add, the gnats will, will start to, to grow as well. So, I use uh, coconut um, husk, um, or co coconut husks. It comes in a brick, and your local pet store, in this case, we get it at Gardell's Pet Shop in Owen Sound. Um, anywhere that has lizards and that sort of thing will have it. It comes in a solid compressed brick, and it actually expands and explodes, gets really big. So this brick makes a ton of bedding. Um, Anyways, and then what we feed is a combination of a couple things. Um, I'm using the Hagen Nutrients cat food, which is also supplied from Gerdell's Pet Shop in Owen Sound on 10th Street. And uh, I'm using the adult one. I have tried the kitten food, and they seem to uh, grow and do better. But the reason why we use this cat food is there's no bad anything inside. So we've got no fillers, no nothing. Uh, remember, with Grendel worms, um, whatever you gut load them on is what your fish are going to be getting for nutrients. So if you feed it to your cat and it keeps them going, it will do good for your fish. And I also mix in um, North Fin. Now this is an old bag that I use to, I buy it in bulk. So, um, and I fill this up and then that's how I get around to all my tanks with it. But I also mix it in with the veggie um, cichlid mix. So, but I also don't recommend feeding Grendel worms to your African cichlids, especially in the Ambunas and the Haps. Um, too much protein and not enough veggie in their diet will cause bloat. But since I've been using the North Fin, um, even the cichlid mix uh, with the Ambunas and Haps in my, in my mix tank here. Um, so I mix the veggie in with this and uh, I haven't had any problems with bloat. Anyways, so what we do is I just add some of this. And I add a few handfuls of, you know, whatever, depends how much you're doing. I've got probably 10 containers of these going at once. I'm going to add some cat food. A little container. And then I soak it down. And I let it sit until it's puffed and swelled and soaked up most of that water. And the same with your uh, coconut husk. And I'll finish wetting this down and when it's expanded I'll, I'll be back. Okay, so we're back here and the um, coconut husk has started is swell into its full capacity um, it's uh, about an inch deep in the bottom of this container and I also do the lids the same way as I do for my micro worms a bit of uh, coffee filter taped to the top and a hole in it so they can breathe um, the reason why you do this in all your cultures is to stop any other bugs or anything from getting in there and growing in your culture Okay. And this coconut stuff will last a long time. It, it explodes. If you've never used it in the lizard tank, that's not even done. That's not fully wet yet. And it's the little bit you've seen before has turned into a mass. So it lasts a long time. And you'll get a lot of culture out of it. Um, the other thing, too, is when you're feeding, the dirt will uh, uh, get in your tank and, and clog up your filters. Um, if you don't get it all out, whereas this doesn't seem to cause as much of an effect on the tank. I'll also show you how we do that. And the food, I usually let it sit until there's no dry spots at all left on the cat food. So you're going to get, if you've bought a culture from Gerdell Pet Shop, known sound, it'll come in the same sort of little container, one of these with a lid. And then you're just going to pour that in and, and uh, you need a piece of acrylic, which as well or glass to cover the top like so 
Okay, and you're going to put your food down in here on the surface and put this on. Now I'll show you why we use acrylic in one of my cultures. Well, this one, it seems like the bigger the container, the, the better it is. But as you can see, there's just a mass of worms on top. So if we're going to collect them, we're just going to take our finger, run it across the top. Of that glass you can see you get as many as you want or you can use a little putty scraper or something and then just dip your fingers in water so if you get some coconut husk you can take that to the sink and pour and rinse and pour and rinse until you get some clear water but you'll see them in there crawling around and doing their thing. Now they will survive for a day or two in the tank if they don't get eaten right away. Show those in a minute, feeding the tank. I don't know if I can find my spoon. You're gonna get yours in a container or if you, however it comes from somebody else. Um, and pour it in on top. In this case, I'm just going to take a bit of this batting that's in the existing culture with some worms. And I'm just going to put them right in on top. And you want to keep this culture damp, so when you take it apart, if you see any of the coconut husk drying out, you're going to squirt it with some water. I don't know if I can find one here eventually. The more you put in, the faster your culture is going to take off same time and that's as simple as that and they're gonna find their way they're gonna burrow down because they don't like the light like a dewworm they're from the dewworm family so I understand so that's why you're gonna put the acrylic or glass in for extract for taking them out and to keep them comfortable with coming to the surface to get their food and, uh, this container here has a mix of glass and acrylic and you can see there's not enough of them in there yet and they're getting some moldy food so when you do your feeding about every other day that's when I do mine and I also feed them every other day to everything but my African cichlids except for the Tanganyikans they'll take them um, you're gonna scrape that off and or spoon out any of the moldy food that hasn't been eaten and then add in some fresh stuff. And as you can see, they're just uh, going crazy on it. Nice and fat and good colors to them. Anyways, the um, angelfish will eat these. Um, just everything loves them. Guppies. Um, just about anything you put them in will eat them and, and enjoy them. I feed them to my discus. I feed them to uh, my uh, Tanganyikan cichlids, the Bichard eye, and the uh, neon blues uh, Tanganyikans. Um, anyways, and uh, if the big thing too I have to say is that if the better your food is soaked, the, the easier time they have eating it. So make sure, sometimes I'll leave the, the food sit for up to an hour uh, before I feed, and then I just dip in, sprinkle a little food across the top, do that, push it down a little bit, put the lid on it, put it on a shelf. Again, some people will keep these in a, in a uh, wine fridge and that, but I don't. I just keep them like this in my fish room. And as I said, with the the micro worms. Um, my fish room stays about 70 to 74 degrees all the time. Um, so it doesn't make too much of a difference, I don't think. I think that probably the food would mold faster. Uh, I know keeping it in the fridge, people say the gnats don't grow uh, the same. And uh, I don't know if there's anything else. I guess I can show you them eating, gobbling these up. Okay, we're back at the Bouchard eye tank. Now, uh, if you've gotten a bunch of coconut husks and stuff, like I said, you would have poured the top off, 
added some fresh water, pour it off, add some fresh water, pour it off, add some fresh water. Um, if you can get it off the acrylic or the glass without any contaminants, you can just take your finger and go right in the tank with them. And we'll give this a dump. Sometimes you might get a few uh, eggs from the fish in here, but you'll see they just go crazy over them. If you're doing any breeding or you just want healthy fish, a good supplement of fresh food is definitely the ticket. Uh, just like a good dose of vitamins that's natural, it gets them uh, feeling more comfortable. And in a lot of cases, some fish won't breed until they get live food. So, anyways, uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.